everyone, my name is Shannon. Welcome to King Family Farm and welcome to the grow room in my basement. Um, it's Sunday, it's quiet, it's snowing yet again. I'd rather hope we were done with that, but we're not. So I'm in my basement pretending it's not sewing, snowing and I'm going to sow tomatoes today. But I also have some micro dwarf tomatoes that I did not label the tray, so I have no idea what variety they are. But when I figure it out, I'll put it in the show notes. Um, I do know I got these from the Incredible Seed Company. <clears throat> so I started these in a little three quarter inch soil block. I'm getting ready to bump these up into a two inch soil block, which is what these are here. Um, and I've made some already. Uh, it's the first time I've made some this year. So they're a little wonky, but they're okay. So this is my favorite way to grow tomatoes. They just, they adjust really easy. You get really healthy root systems and they're so easy to pot up, like really easy. Um, these are not going to get really big because they're micro dwarf tomatoes. They're going to finish off in a gallon pot. So I'm going to bump them up into this, let them grow. And then when I find my gallon pots they are around, um, they're going to go from this into a gallon pot and that's it. They're not going to go anywhere else. So <clears throat> I'm just going to pull these up. These did not have the best germination. Um, could have been me. So basically I just pull the little three quarter inch block apart. You can see the root system there and it's a nice little plant and I'm going to put them in this two inch block. So the two inch block is made with this blocker here and I will link it down below and you can see inside that it's got these square pieces and these are designed to push in and make a dent in the top of these soil blocks that takes this three quarter inch block. So the potting up of these, when you haven't made a mess of the block, is really simple. We're just going to tuck it in, just like that. That's it, guys. It's potted up. It's really simple. So pull the next one. And just tuck those roots in. I like to water them before I try separating them. They do quite well that way. off any extra this is just for me this is just really really quick and I like it so and of course it reduces plastic waste with the six pack see now that block fell apart on me because it's a little too wet so we'll just tuck it in there with some soil and it'll be just fine just like that okay so I need two more so I'm going to make some blocks here. I've made my mix. It's in my container here. Um, I'll link the videos down below where I make the mix and um, show you how to do that because I have done that before. But we want to make sure we really get this full. Of soil. And I try to tuck them nice and close. And you're going to get a bit of a vacuum, so I kind of try and work it a bit so that we're not missing corners of our block. You can see there a little bit of soil stuck, but it's okay. So, and that's kind of it. Now, I only need two of these, but I've got some other tomatoes I could actually put in there. Well, this one might be okay. This one broke off. But you can just see here how much these little plants want to live because that right there there we go is a true leaf so I'm going to let it I'm going to stick it in here and see what it does and it might just take off might not but it'll probably live this is the best looking one of the bunch it's very it's nice and robust normally I would take a knife and cut these apart but I have no idea what I've done with my knife either I had a show yesterday in town, first craft show of the season. It was a spring, like Easter bazaar. It wasn't bad. Um, it's been better, but I think it's it's been a tough year for a lot of people, and and that's where we're at. So we did really well with egg sales, though. I'm just gonna tuck this in. This is a great thing to do on a snowy day. You're just playing in the mud, and then we've got. That one I'll just tuck it in there and then all I'm gonna do 
Let's pull this out. Back in there. We don't need it. Now this, because it's had seeds and everything in it, and it's got just a little bit of algae on it, this I'm going to just toss in the compost, which I've got a bin right here. And I will rinse this off and I'll reuse it for tomatoes that I'm going to start today for some other tomatoes. But that's it for potting those up. And they look good and they look happy and they will go back up under my grow lights. And I think they're going to take off really quickly. Because um, now all of a sudden they've got some somewhere to go with their roots. So I would say by the end of this week, they'll just all of a sudden they'll take off. Which is what's really nice about the soil blocks is that you don't get the circling that you get when you use a cell pack. And I mean, if that's what you've got, use them. Um, I just prefer these. They do really, really well when they transplant. They seem to go through a little less shock. Um, and so that's why we use these. So I'm gonna put those aside. And when I figure out what kind they are, I'm gonna label them because I obviously have no idea what variety they are. So I'm just gonna pop those up on my grow lights. And I've got a tray here. Get this out because I don't need it. So that's a two inch soil blocker. It also comes with, I've, heard, I've got them in my other soil blocker. This is a one and a half inch. And you can see these white nipples. They're designed to actually, you can pop them out like that. <laughs> and they come out like this. And then you can replace the squares in this with these and that's for sowing seeds um, it puts a dimple in the block for things like um, squash and larger seeds that you would want to start um, inside when you have the short growing season that we do so I want to get my this is so this is my 20 cell and I'm going to fill it this is like being a kid and playing in mud pies. It's fantastic. All right. Let me just, we'll set up 20. It's not bad. It's sticking though. It's a bit. All right. We've got that one and I'm going to grab some tomato seeds to put in that. So I've got here, let's see what we're going to start. Black creme is one of my favorites. Plum Regal, I want more than 20 of those. These are Cherokee Purples, Black Creme, Little Orange. These are all my slicers. Ooh, I wanted to try these. So these are from the Incredible Seed Company. And they are called pineapple. And I think I saw these the first time over on Appalachia Homestead with Patera. And that was last year. And they look quite tasty. So I thought I would give them a try. So that's what we're gonna put in this tray. It says 30 seeds, but I have a feeling there's way more than 30 seeds in this package. So Incredible Seed Company, I'll link them below. They're from uh, Nova Scotia. Small little, well, they're probably bigger than I am, but they're still a small family farm in uh, in Nova Scotia that sells heirloom, organic, uh, open pollinated seeds. Oops. I haven't got my pencil handy or anything here. I am just, I'm not very organized right now. But I will just use this to move the seed around. Put it there. Some of the seeds are stuck together, so we've got more than more than one seed per cell, which we don't want. This actually works like tweezers. Imagine that. Oops, stuck to my finger now. All right. We're gonna make this happen, guys. There we go. So like I said, I'll link my video below on how to make the soil blocking mix. And I've actually gotta make some more up today because I don't have enough here to do the start the tomatoes that I wanna start. I need like five more seeds. It says approximately 30 seeds. There's probably 
50 in here or 60 at, at least it's there's an amazing amount of seeds here one three there we go and we're going to label this tray so we know what this is because i never remember and quite frankly when they germinate they all look the same tomato Pineapple, and the date is 0326. So we're kind of here. We're at the point where we're starting um, our tomato seeds for retail sales. Uh, still a little early for starting ones that you want to put outside, simply because of the frost dates. So, and if you've followed along with us and you you've worked on your calendar for your frost dates, um, if you're in a slightly warmer zone than I am then you absolutely could could be starting your tomato seeds for planting outside. Um, here, it's just too early and they get too big and then you gotta pot them up too many times before you can put them in the ground. And I really don't find you end up much further ahead. So we wanna keep this as frugal as possible. So we try not to um, pot things up and use a bunch of potting soil. So these are going to go from here. They're going to sit on heat until 50% of them germinate and uh, And then we'll put them under the grow lights. I've found I've moved the camera so you can see down here It's easier for me to set up and I have found a pencil for me to set some seeds Although I think I'm going to try a toothpick. I don't usually use toothpicks, but I found a pack of toothpicks So I thought I'd give it a try Of course now I can't get the lid back on but anyways Let's see. We did the pineapple, um, which I'm pretty excited about. Those ones, the pineapple ones, are new to me. So I do want to do some green zebra. I'm not going to do too many of them. And also, people are very weirded out by them, um, particularly if I go to sell the tomatoes at market. They're like, oh, they're not ripe. How long will they be before they ripen? But they're ripe. They're just green. And a lot of people haven't seen green tomatoes before, but these are so good. They have kind of like this um, citrusy, almost kiwi type flavor to them. I think that's the end of this packet too. Let's try a toothpick. All right. And I think so. I'm just going to start 20 because I'll probably only put about five in, in my beds for um, retail sales of actual tomatoes. And then I'll put the rest up for sale as plants and hopefully people we get a few extra adventurous people every year and which is kind of fun for me because I get to share my favorite varieties but most people they want a red tomato or at the very least they want to know that they're getting an heirloom tomato um, I get a lot of people who ask me are they heirloom are they non-gmo and I just want to reiterate that all seeds available to the general public and that includes me even though I'm growing plants for for the general public um, as a as a grower all seeds available to the general public are non-gmo you cannot get gmo seeds um, from a regular seed house like Vessie's or william dam or um my husband's decided to vacuum probably my favorite for fresh eating so I'm gonna start 40 of them and uh, I'll sell some of them as retail sales um, as plants some of them I will sell um, as actual tomatoes at market 
and then the rest we'll eat because they are really one of my favorites for flavor and they hold up fairly well for an heirloom tomato so we'll start 40 of these Oops. I think he thinks I'm editing a video right now, but it's already uploading. So he didn't know, but that's okay. We're not gonna stop someone who wants to clean. I don't care who it is. You wanna clean my house. I'm not gonna stop you from doing that. Just because I wanna make a video. So let me know in the comments what your favorite tomatoes are. I These are some of my favorites. The Black Crim, Green Zebra, um, and Cherokee Purple are, are my favorites. The only real issues with them as seeds, as, as tomatoes for market, not the plants themselves, but as tomatoes for market, they just don't hold up. They really don't. Um, I don't know why I put that back in. That's empty. Um, unfortunately, that's where we're at. Oh, those were black crib. So I will finish seeding that out. I have another packet of black crim now from, uh, what am I doing? No idea what I'm doing. Black crim. There were more seeds in this package. There's lots of seeds in this package. I don't need to open another one. I only need three more. So I really enjoy the black cram, um, green zebra, and Cherokee purple. The only real issues with the heirloom tomatoes is they're um, not as sturdy. So when you travel them to market, they have a tendency to get bruised. And then what happens is, is your customer takes them home and they are a little upset because those tomatoes, they just don't keep the same way, which is really unfortunate. Um, so you have to be very careful with them when you're taking them to market. You only, you don't double stack on one layer, very gently picked, maybe on the slightly underripe side, a couple of days before market. You of course never put your tomatoes in a cooler of any kind because that changes the whole texture and flavor. They go mealy. And that's one of the things that if you've had grocery store tomatoes, that's why you don't like them. The texture is just gross. It's because they're not picked when they're ripe um, and they're refrigerated and it's the refrigeration more than anything else that is the issue um, if you can get a tomato to blush on the vine you can bring it into your house and let it ripen and arguably it's depending on who you ask is basically the same as a tomato that's been fully ripened on the vine Hey, babe. Hey. Hey. What you doing? I just cleaned up in the, in the process. Mm. Put her eggs out. Thanks. She's still coming? As far as I know, she hasn't sent a message, but... She usually does, right? Yeah. I was filming a video and the vacuum started. <laughs> Oh, I'm sorry. That's okay. Camera's still running. Sorry. I'm going to voice it over, I think. That's what's going to happen. So that's kind of what we're doing today. I just wanted to show you um, how we're going to pot up our pot up our tomatoes, which is just basically bumping them into a two-inch block. Now, for retail sales, I'll be bumping those into um, a three-and-a-half-inch pot. When I go from the three-quarter inch, they'll go into a three-and-a-half-inch pot, and that's just the way I do that. Um, but for me, for growing, um, outdoors, I will bump into a two inch block and that'll be the last I do with them until they go outside and they will be a good size transplant about that big, which is like six, eight inches. And that's a good size. And then you can just sink it right into the soil and they do really, really well. So that's kind of it. We're just starting tomatoes today. Um, hoping for sun and more maple syrup and, uh, less snow. 
Um, I really, really hoped we were done with it, but here we are. So thanks for joining us today. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share, and we'll see you here next time.